Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DMB. Today I wanted to show you how you can create your dream garden in nine steps. That being said, let's jump into the video. So the project that we've just completed here in the studio was for a client who wanted to completely change their garden. And I'll be referring back to this garden project throughout the whole of this video. So tip number one, before you start designing or drawing anything out, is to establish what sort of style you want for the garden. Do you want it to be a continuation of your interior or to be something completely contrasting? Now here's a breakdown of some garden styles to help you. So we have Scandinavian, Japanese or Zen, French, Contemporary and Modern, Mexican, Moroccan, Tropical, English Country, Desert and Mediterranean. I hope that you identify with at least one of these garden styles. Once you've chosen your design style or perhaps even more than one, the second thing that you need to do is to get inspiration. The easiest way to do this, I feel, is to create a Pinterest board and start saving images. You can search for an image and save them so that you can look back and create a sense of what you would like for your garden. And if that's not possible for you, then even the old school method of cutting and sticking out old magazines Images will work perfectly. Tip number three is to write down the three things that your garden must include. This is really important because these are the things that you will base your design on. For example, my client's three things were an entertainment or dining area, a hot tub and a barbecue area. Really think about what is important to you and narrow it down to three things. And that goes on to my fourth tip, which is to create a mood board. More specifically, a mood board of the sort of atmosphere you want to create. When I say atmosphere, I mean the overall feeling you want in the space. This is for our project, for example. I wanted the client to picture themselves cooking in a bespoke barbecue area and then go on to eat al fresco as well as be able to smell all of the fresh herbs and produce within the garden. So I try to convey that within the images. Really identify how you'll feel in the garden and what activities you'll be doing. Also, it's important to include elements that will be big parts of the design, such as the bulb lighting and the circular hot tub. And obviously, most importantly, add a few plants and flowers that you'd like. Now, this tip is to find out what plants are in season. If you want them to blossom in the summer, then you need to do your research and really find out what plants are best suited for the summer. All this type of information is easily accessible on the internet and also in thousands of books. Now, this is the fun part, the designing, but before you start to put in any furniture in the plan or even plants, you need to scale it back and I'll show you some design guides that will really, really help. Start out by drawing the rough shape of your garden. I've also added the client's conservatory at the front, so feel free to add any additional structural elements. Then you'll need to determine the sun direction. You don't want to place plants that need sunlight in a place that's shaded. Therefore, it's important to work out the direction of the sun throughout the day. I'm sure you all know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, making south-facing gardens the ideal sun traps. But if you can't work out the sun direction, use the website SunCalc, type in your home address and it will do all the work for you. The next part of the site diagram is to add noise pollution. Where around your garden is the loudest? Are there any roads surrounding? Are there any pedestrian paths or alleyways? By doing this, it will help you to determine where to place certain things. For example, my client has a main road at the front of their house and an alleyway at the back. 
so therefore it would be stupid to place the entertainment area at the back of the garden. The next thing to do is add the wind direction. All this information can be accessed online as well of course. This will make sure that you don't position your seating areas in a place that's exposed to the elements. The next step is to add structural elements that are already there, such as fencing or anything that cannot be moved. And in the same way, add large trees and bushes that you want to keep, as the design will have to work around this. Once you've done this, you can start to map out the main structural elements, i.e. the shed, the hot tub and the decking area. Okay, so tip number seven is circulation. This will help you determine how you want people to move throughout your garden. Let me show you what I mean by that. The conservatory is the first point and then that leads on to a decking area. Then within the decking area is the entertainment space, a cooking area, and in the center there's the steps that lead to the garden. The garden is pretty much comprised of a grass lawn um, and to the right of that is the jacuzzi and two flower beds that lie with either side and right at the back corner you have the shed by doing this you really define the different zones and spaces within your garden tip number eight is furniture fixtures and equipment this is almost like a database of all the things that you're going to purchase so your materials your furniture any plants um, paint, absolutely everything you're going to account for. This will give you a real indication of how much everything will cost in the overall outcome. And maybe you can scale it back a bit if you need to. I'm using Adobe InDesign, but you can use Excel, PowerPoint, or even just some info on your phone or a piece of paper as long as you know all of the prices and calculations of all of the materials, and most importantly, how much you'll need. So the quantity of, for example, um, wooden posts or how many paintings you'll need. Tip number nine is to draw everything out and you can be as detailed as you want to be here. But I would suggest always using colour to give a real indication of what plants and furniture are going to be there. Now I really want to stress that you do not have to be brilliant at drawing, you don't have to be an artist here, you just need to know that it's only you who needs to understand the drawing. And play around until you are completely happy with the design.
As I'm a designer, I would usually go on and create a 3D rendered animation for my clients so that they can really immerse themselves within their design. But obviously that is not necessary for you at all, so don't worry about that. Here are some real quick tips that I want to give you. Number one is don't buy wooden furniture. For those of you who have had wooden furniture in the past, then you know the issues it can cause. Especially living in England, the weather is not reliable. Most of the time it rains, which means that the wood will rot, but wood can also warp in the sun. So I would veer away from that. Wood just takes so much maintenance anyway, and you'll probably find yourself re-varnishing things in the future. So I would just stay away from that. When you're planting, make sure that you actually leave room for the plants to grow. Oftentimes people will just buy as much as they can in the garden center, plant everything, and then the plants fail because they don't have room to grow. So make sure that you leave gaps. Okay, so those are my top tips on how to design your dream garden. If you want to see how our garden project turned out, I'll leave a link at the end of this video. And if you're new, then welcome. This channel is all about interior design, architecture, illustration, art, and graphics. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this. And if you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up because you really do support our channel by doing that. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.